Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month I thought I would do a follow-up on something that I submitted for Plex Pro Week last week. It just wrapped up. And in my submission, one of the two that I did, I talked about Plex's webhooks feature. And what this does is it fires off some data every time you uh, play something on your Plex server, every time you rate something, there's a little piece of data that can get sent off to an automation workflow. And in the video, I wanted to demo just how much data is there and what you can do with it. And I showed off some N8N workflows that I've been playing around with, but these can get a little bit complicated. You do have to install an N8N server or pay them uh, to have them host the N8N server for you. And if you just wanted to play around with this feature a little bit and get your feet wet with it without having to pay any money or install anything, we're gonna take a look at that today using something called make.com. And make.com has a free tier so we can play around with some of these webhooks without having to subscribe to anything and your free tier usage credits reset every month. This is not a free trial, it's an actual free service. And if you are just a casual user, you may not hit the limit and you might be able to have some automations that improve your experience with Plex without having to code anything and without having to do anything more than just sign up for a make.com account. So what we're gonna do in this video is attach some webhooks to make.com from my Plex server we're going to do a few automations just to show you how all of this stuff can work together and that hopefully will get your gears turning about how you might better integrate Plex into your automation workflow. Now, before we dive into this, I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they did not review or approve this video before it was uploaded and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and see what we can do with webhooks on the make.com free tier. Now, as a refresher, webhooks require a Plex pass to work. This is a premium feature. And the way these things operate is that when you have them enabled, Plex will send a blob of data to URLs that you specify every time one of the following events takes place on your server. So that could be adding new media to your library. It could be hitting the pause or play button on your remote control from a player. It can fire off when somebody rates a piece of content on the server, when you resume stuff, when you get to the end of a particular piece of content. And then there's some admin uh, things that will also fire off a webhook. And you can have webhooks go to multiple destinations. In this instance, we're going to go to make.com with our webhook. And what you can do is you can put some logic in on the receiving end of this to only fire off, for example, when you hit the play button, which is the demo we're going to start with here. But you can have it do something else when perhaps you get to the end of your media. Maybe you can have the lights come up or something. And we've done that uh, in prior videos. So why don't we dive into this a little bit more now with make.com and see how we can get that end set up and then we'll connect the two together. All right, so we are on the home screen of make.com. I signed up for the free account. You'll note here I have 1000 credits. What does that mean? Well, the way make.com works, at least my understanding of it so far, is that a credit is a task that gets executed. So for example, what we're gonna demo here first is receiving a webhook and then adding a row to a spreadsheet to kind of build a log of what we're watching on Plex. And so that uh, action of receiving the webhook is one credit, and then the execution of adding the row to a spreadsheet is a second credit, and we get a thousand credits per month. So if you are a casual user, this won't consume all that much. Those credits reset every 30 days. And on the free tier, I can have two workflow scenarios. So it is a bit limited, but for casual use or for learning how this feature works, I think it's pretty decent, at least to start with, because as far as I can see, short of installing an N8N server on your own hardware, there is nothing else free at the moment that can work with these webhooks. So why don't we go ahead here and create a scenario? And what we're gonna start with here is a webhook. So I'm going to just search for webhooks, and we're going to click on this. And what we're gonna do is have it work as a trigger and what we're gonna do here is select the custom webhook option. So we're going to select that, and then we're going to click create a webhook. Now what's gonna happen here is we're going to get a URL from make.com that we're going to bring over to our Plex server. But why don't we set up the URL first here, and then we'll go on from there. All right, so I'm gonna rename the webhook here to Plex. I don't think I need to do anything with this API key thing here, so I'm just going to click on save. And when I do this, I will now have myself a webhook. And you can see here, it's got a URL. And I'm going to copy this address to my clipboard. 
and then I'm going to click on save here to save it. So now I've got the address in my clipboard. And what we need to do now is go over to our Plex control panel and add this URL to the webhooks feature. So on the left hand side of your screen here on your configuration, you've got an option for webhooks. This again is a Plex pass feature. And then what we're going to do is click on add webhook. And what I'm going to do now is paste in the URL of that make.com webhook that we just set up. And I'm going to click on save changes. So now what's going to happen here is that every time one of these webhooks fires off, there's a webhook that's going to go to my N8N server, but we're also now sending a webhook over to make.com for this scenario. So why don't we pick it up on the next step and see what we're gonna do next. Now to start things off here, we do need to have one of these webhooks arrive so that we can start working on some of the logic that we want to put in place here. So even though I don't have anything attached to this webhook module yet, I'm going to click on run once. And what this is going to do is have make.com start listening for data just to make sure all of this is connected properly. And I'm gonna go over to my phone here and play a Star Trek Voyager episode that's on my server. And what should happen here is we should have had a webhook fire off and we did. And now we've got all of this data that we can now work with for continuing our workflow here. All right, so now we've got some data that came over from Plex. And if we dive into this a little bit here by extending out the payload, you can see all this data here. Now, right now, this is just a blob of text. So what we have to do is parse this out. So to do that, we're going to click on the plus button here. I'm going to click on or search for JSON and go to parse JSON. And this will all make sense in a minute here. I'm gonna leave data structure blank for the string. What I'm going to do is go over to the payload here that's coming from our webhook and drag that into the string and click save. Now, right now we don't have any data that we can work with because we have to run this again. So I'm gonna click on the run once again. There's a warning here just because it doesn't want you to end on a data transformer like this, that's fine. We're gonna run anyway because we need to have this data so that we can set up our route of logic. So I'm gonna click on run anyway and I'm going to have it use our existing data so we don't have to wait for another webhook. And now what's gonna happen is that this is gonna fire off and now we've got some JSON that we can work with here. So I'm gonna click on add another module. I'm going to search for the router. And what this will do is route tasks based on the events that we're going to be receiving from our webhooks. So I'm gonna click on that. It defaults to two tasks. We're just gonna start with an easy one here. So I'm gonna click on first and I'm going to click set up a filter. And the label here is going to be called play. The condition now, if I click on condition, I've got all of this JSON data that came over from Plex. And I'm going to click on event here and just drag it in. Now what we wanna look for here is something that we can find on the Plex webhook support page, which is the media state. So if we go to that support page, we can see that media.play is one of the things that gets sent over in that event. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna drop that into the text operator here as media.play and click on save. And so what'll happen here is that the next time something is played, this is gonna all work out. So we'll have the webhook fire off because we hit the play button on the player. The JSON will get all of the data set up into different data fields. The router is going to look for the state of that event. And if it's media.play, it's going to execute something. So here we're gonna click the plus button and I'm going to add Google Sheets to the mix. Now, the first time you connect up Google Sheets, you will need to connect your Google account to make.com to get access to those sheets. I set that up a little bit earlier here. Once that connection is made and you add this Google Sheets option, uh, you will have that connection. You don't need to go search by path. Uh, leave it at my drive here, and then you can actually click on this button here for a very quick access to all of the spreadsheets that you have in your account. I'm going to select the Plex log option here, which is my Plex spreadsheet that I set up. And I'm going to select the first worksheet, sheet one from that. And if you're curious, this is what that spreadsheet looks like. I've got a show, an episode, and a date played that I want to collect from Plex when I play something. So that is what it looks like. And what I'm gonna do here, 
uh, because I have the table contains header option set to yes, it's going to assume that the first row are the headers. So if I put my mouse into that text field, what will pop up on make.com is all of the data that came over in that webhook. So what I'm going to do here is just look for Star Trek Voyager under grandparent title. I'm going to drag that in here. Now for the episode, we're going to combine two pieces of data. So the first one is the season that we're in. So I'm going to have parent title come over here, which is what the season is. So it's going to say season five, and then I'm going to type in episode and a colon, and then I'm going to drag in the uh, parent index here, which I believe is the episode number, which should be five, because that's what it says there. And then as far as the date is concerned, I wanted to fire off with the date that I played the media. And the easiest way to do that is to jump back over here and hit a slash to search. And we're going to type in now to give us the date. And that is it. So we're going to click on save here. And now we've got a route where the webhook fires off, the JSON is going to get parsed, the router is going to look for media.play. If it receives media.play, it's going to add a line to our spreadsheet. So why don't we go ahead now and hit the play button again and see if this actually fires off. All right, so here goes nothing. I'm going to click on the run once again and have it wait for new data so that we give it a fresh webhook here. And so now it is waiting. I'm going to scroll over to my spreadsheet just to see if this will fire off in real time here. I'm going to click the watch button now on my phone. That should set things in motion. And look how quickly, let me pause my phone here. Look how quickly we got the information from make.com, Star Trek Voyager, season five, episode five, and the date that it was played. So it looks like the logic on this was working as we set it up to work. And this should give you some things to think about now as to maybe how you could integrate this into your workflow. No code here. We just mapped up some stuff and we were done. So now I've got another scenario here. So what we're going to look for next is the media stop. And if it receives a stop, it's going to go on a different track where it goes out to chat GPT and will make a recommendation for me about what to watch next based on what I was watching. And it's going to send that recommendation to me via email. So right now I've got the show here playing. And if I go up here and hit the X, which will send that stop command, as you can see, we've already got things firing off here. And what's happening right now is ChatGPT is taking the input that just flowed through this workflow. It's going to think about it for a minute or two and then send me an email, hopefully, with that recommendation. But you'll note here that the playback one did not execute because the event was stop. So let's let ChatGPT chew on this for a second. And when it's done, we'll take a look at my email and see what we got. All right, so here we go. We've got a very comprehensive list from ChatGPT about all the different shows that might line up with what we just watched here. And this can fire off every time I hit the stop button. I could have this do all sorts of different things, as you can see, which I think is pretty neat here. So if you're curious as to what prompt I had ChatGPT work with, uh, this is it. I said, you are a recommender of TV shows. What you can see here is that I wrote out some plain text, but I also inserted the show name from the JSON parse uh, module here that was powering a lot of the other things that we've been doing uh, in this workflow here. And that is what generated the email that we see here. So you can integrate AI in a lot of fun ways as well and have these things just fire off. Uh, whenever a Plex event is received. Now, as far as home automation is concerned, I found that a lot of the major automation platforms like Make or N8N or Zapier don't play all that well with home automation. So if you're looking to control your lights and thermostats and want something simple, I found, at least at this point, the easiest track is IFTTT. IFTTT used to be free, now it is not. So if you want to get the most out of it and control your lights with a webhook, uh, you do need to subscribe to one of their pro plans. They're about $35 a year. Now, if you want to get a little more complex, you can look at using Home Assistant, which is totally free and open source. You can self-host it. It does have the ability to get webhooks from Plex, and that could also drive a lot of your home automation. A lot of you out there might be already using Home Assistant for that purpose. But again, it's not a simple solution, but it's something that you can get working that will link up all of your home automation quite nicely. So that's definitely an option if you want to get into that. Maybe we'll look at that uh, in a future video here. 
One other thing to take a look at is the new Plex API. They had a big announcement during Plex Pro Week. The documentation is now out. You can start attaching your applications to Plex with a sanctioned method here without having to shoehorn anything. And I think we're going to see a lot of activity in the third party solutions territory as a result of this. So definitely check out the link uh, that you'll find in the video description to learn more about the API. This, of course, is not a codeless solution, but I do think what will happen now that the API is out there, we'll start seeing nodes set up for Make and N8N and others that will simplify the process of connecting into your Plex server without having to deal with the webhooks if you don't want to go down that route. So stay tuned. We'll be covering this as things develop, of course. One other thing to check out during the Pro Week thing here uh, is my YouTube colleague Techno Tim was another part of Pro Week. He had his own tips and he did a little bit of work with this new API, connecting it uh, to a dashboard that he set up to monitor his Plex server's performance. So that's definitely something you'll want to check out. I've got links to that down in the video description. So what I wanted to do with this video was try to show you a simple way to work with webhooks without code. So hopefully this was helpful and might give you some ideas for how you might integrate some automations into your life. And again, for the simplest solution, I think IFTTT is probably the way to go, but you do have to get their pro account to do it. That will do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.